And when they get through with the barn today, we're gonna tell y'all about our plan with Moody and possibly Mildred and what our plan is over there for those guys too. We got a, it's, it's, it's a, we think it's gonna be pretty awesome. <laughs> We got some big old trucks rolling in. That can only mean one thing. The concrete is here. What is happening, Cog Squad? Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. And I got some news to tell y'all about these guys. Well, what are we plan on doing with these guys? We got a we got something to need to let you guys that we think is gonna work out perfectly. I will say, still no ducks in the garden, which is a wonderful thing. Absolutely wonderful. I can't tell you how worried I was about that whole situation. Y'all look at that crew. Peaches, Redneck, Bootsy, Pears, Fifi, Tip, and a random duck, men in black, but look at that crew under there. Well, y'all lazing around today, ain't y'all? I guess since y'all live with the boss lady, she says it's all right, then I'm cool with it too. Morning, Sheriff. How you doing this morning? Doing all right? Make no arrests last night, did you? All right, just checking. So I got to give y'all a climbing pinky update because it it's, it's, this climbing pinky is going to town. Look at her. Woo wee. She is going to town. I am not going to lie. Good gracious. Man, and you can smell it. My, my, my. It smells so good. So good. While I'm over here in the garden, first of all, let's check out, let's check out our garden house looking real quick here. I ain't cut the fence off yet, but we're looking good. Everything's looking good. I've been watching it. If I think it needs water and I've been using the drip irrigation and getting things watered and uh, everything's looking good. But while I'm over here too, I want to show y'all the onions. Look at that red onion. Look at that thing. Wow. And our greens are still super green. So we're not near harvesting time, but look at the onions y'all. And these are leeks right here. But look at them, look at there. Look at that thing. Woo, woo, woo. Look at them. Look at there. Y'all, we gonna have some good eating. We gonna have some good, good eating. I am super happy about the onions. But I can't get over that climbing pinky. Boy, that makes me happy right there. Look at it. Whew. You see them over doing the concrete? See them? Hmm? See the guys over there doing the concrete? You know what that means? You can't go over there. Yeah. You, you can't go over there. That we don't need, you know, you knee deep in concrete over there. Wet concrete. And they'll be through by the end of the day. And he said that that uh, it'll be fine for dogs. So we'll go check them out here later on this afternoon, okay? But in the meantime, stay away from over there. All right, so let me go tell you guys about our plan with 
the cows and what we want to do with those guys. Come on, let's go. So while the guys are out there working on the concrete on the barn, I want to tell you guys about what we're wanting to do for Moody and possibly Mildred. Our plan is, is we think we're eventually going to have to move Moody and Mildred together. Uh, mainly because Mildred's getting so big, uh, feeding is starting to become just a little issue. She's eating all the feed. And we just think it's just going to be better if the two bovine end up being with each other. And it's going to be a lot bigger pasture. And since that's happening, we're thinking about building them their own shelter their own house their own separate shelter they'll still have access to the barn if need be for but for daily use we're really thinking about and we're going to we're not thinking about we're going to do it we're going to build them a big shelter out here kind of way out here a little further away from the barn but not a long ways away from the barn i mean the barn's still right there it's not it's not that far from the barn but somewhere in this area out here for them that'll be plenty plenty big we're talking about a pretty big shelter like a three-sided running shed is kind of what I call it um, Brant's working on it Brant knows all about cows his wife that's all she does she's a full-time cattle farmer so we're getting with them they're gonna they're helping us out with this shelter we're also planning on making a porch or a covered area on the front so it's gonna be really really big and this will be designated for whoever's out here but mainly moody and more likely mildred and this would be their huge their own personal shelter we're thinking for day-to-day -day use that moody's really not going to come to the barn most of his grass and stuff's going to be out here so for his sake we're thinking out here would be better for him this would be the ultimate cow house cow mansion it's not gonna have two stories though i don't think moody can go upstairs to be honest with you guys but i'm where this is this is what we're thinking for them because we're thinking of their best interest i just don't think moody is gonna hang out over here under this barn when all his grass is over here i just don't he's just not he's just not gonna do it he's just not gonna do it the ultimate moody house yeah, out here. You know what I'm saying? I would call it a bachelor pad, but if Mildred moves in with him, you know, it won't be a bachelor pad, even though Moody is a steer. It is time to spray the fruit trees. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Now, here on my farm, I try to do everything as organically as possible. I say that right, organically, organic, organic. And am I 100% organic here? Absolutely not. I'm not gonna tell you no tale. I'm not gonna tell you I am and behind the scenes I'm not. I'm just not. I just do the best I can. When it comes to pest or spraying a fungicide, I always try to do organic. And organic most of the time will work. But the thing with organic pest control is that you have to stay on top of it. You have to be proactive, not reactive. That means getting on a routine and spraying, um, sometimes weekly with uh, organic sprays. Now, if you do get a outbreak or an infestation, organic sprays are probably not gonna help you and you'll have to go another route. So that's why I try to stay on top of my spraying. And that goes with weed and those two things if you stay on top of it you can control it organically for the most part now are there times when i spray and i still get pissed absolutely i do i mean i do and this this here this farm is new to me so i really don't know what kind of pest pressure i even have here honestly now my main concern with fruit trees blight mildew those those kind of things, especially fire blight. That's the one I'm most worried about. So today we are going to spray our fruit trees, which it is early in the morning. And that's when you wanna spray your garden or your fruit trees or flowers or whatever it is you're spraying. You wanna do it early in the morning or late in the evening for two reasons. One, you don't have to worry about your bees, even though I'm doing organic. Two, it's a lot less stress on the plants. main thing is is when you're spraying to spray everything 
And don't forget to go underneath, both sides, top, and underneath the leaves, because a lot of times we'll forget turning your spray upside down and catching all the underneath side. All right, let's finish up the fruit orchard. Glad, so glad to get that done. Why, hello there, Miss Pink. How you doing today, Miss? Did you hear about the barn? Putting the concrete in today, girl. Yeah. Concrete in the barn today. Yeah. I know you're probably going to stay in this barn, but there will be another barn. Yeah. Well, me and Brooke were fixing to go out to do the evening chores, and I just noticed that the concrete guys are gone. So I cannot wait to go see what that looks like. Tucker decided she wants to ride with us to go see the concrete. Our cat dog. Our cat dog. Hopefully our cat dog hadn't put her paw prints in it yet. I hope not. Or our dog dog. <laughs> and here we are. We have concrete. Oh, it echoes. I wouldn't have thought it echoed with the uh, walls not on it. Let's let Tucker meow and see if it echoes. Meow, Tucker. Tucker says she ain't gonna meow when you holding her. She don't know what to think. Look at her tail. I see it. She's very curious. Looks like a rattlesnake. Yeah. You're okay? You're hey. okay. Tucker said that car scared her. Woo! Man, it is. That's what? crazy that it's echoing. It's what I call nice. It is nice. It is extremely nice. Look and at here. And a gentle slope. Oh, man. Look at that. Got the joints cut in it. Got the fiber in it for extra strength. Well, I'll tell you what. I just noticed that I like. So we got... We got these ramps that come in and the ramps can't go all the way. You know, you may think of a, a ramp and that it should slope all the way down to the ground, but the tractor would break it up because it's not thick enough. So this is this is as rampy as you can get. Yeah, well, but you'll put gravel up to it if you want to. But I love that detail edge. That's just, I mean, that's something that's not even necessary. And you like that this is broom swept? I do like it. Because it'll be exposed to the elements yes. and get wet all the time, so non-slick. Non-slick. Now, he asked us, he could have done this broom um, sweep in the barn, and he asked me, and at first I thought, I think I want it. I think I want it. And I thought, I think I don't. Well, I asked Brant, and Brant said that we would catch the devil trying to sweep and clean the barn out at any point, you know, whenever we wanted to with it like this so i was like yeah you're probably right and this is just like the house just a smooth finish except we don't have fiber in the house we didn't need fiber in the house of course the fiber is for added strength we and, got fiber on the porches. and we got fiber on the driveway yeah. and uh it's uh is it um it's fiberglass isn't it you know what it is well it's just an added yeah but it's added at the end of the mix yeah. to add strength Wow, and look at it now. You can really see how big it is. Man, it is awesome. Looks like a skating rink. Ooh! <laughs> and I'm glad we did concrete. Oh, we man. got a ton of feedback. And all I saw was positive. I didn't see any, anything negative about the concrete. And everybody that I saw was like, y'all made the best decision. We had a barn. I saw one person say that they did gravel and, and mats on the gravel. And they said every year you had to clean all that gravel out and pour new gravel. And I was like, oh man, that just really made me feel so much better right then. So I'm glad we're doing, or we did the concrete now. Yeah, decision is over. We're not pulling it up. No, <laughs> no, we're not. It's here to stay. And the plumber called me and he is supposed to come tomorrow and look at plumbing. Yeah, we probably need to start figuring out where we want to put the sink. Yeah. Oh, did you talk about the window? No, I didn't. We got a window. Well, the, the milk room, as we discussed, is going to go in this back corner here. Right. And, you know, this Alabama heat, it gets kind of hot. Yeah. And this room is going to be enclosed. Right. So I'm thinking that one day we may want to add a 
wind the unit air right, conditioner. Right. And there's no way to put it in a metal building. Right. So the next best thing. So we add got a, a window. window. So he picked us up a window and it will go on that back wall right there. Mm -hmm. Plus I can look outside and see my beautiful Mildred and Moody. Right. And tell them hello and Probably put the sink on that. We're definitely gonna put the sink on that wall. Yeah, but I, I was thinking that I don't want the window above the sink because if we put an air conditioning unit in it, it would yeah, be the sink. That's true. So we need to go pull that sink out. Yeah, we do need to go pull that sink out. And kind of lay it out and see how mm -hmm. we it. I agree. Tucker, what do you think? Yeah, we're gonna go get that sink for the barn. Yeah. the sinks let's see how we can work this out I think it's gonna work out at first I didn't but now the more I look at it this area is so large the sinks are big too and when I was looking at the sinks on the ground out there I was like these sinks are way too big for this area this is not gonna work but now back over here and now the sinks are probably gonna work and I think we need to put the counter sink in here is what I'm thinking I'm thinking the counter sink will go in here. In the room. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Definitely. Just keep walking. Just Turn. keep walking. Am I right? Yes, you're right. It's nice. Baby. Yes, it's very nice. And you think, oh, I'm not going to use that counter space. But counter space is your best friend. Yeah. This will work. Let me show you guys what it's going to look like. Brant's not going to know what to think when he comes in and there's a sink in there. <laughs> He's not going to know what to think. So here it is. God, it's so big. It is, and it's going to be used. This is really nice. This will be nice. And, you know, me and you had talked that we're thinking that our best bet is to get Roberto and Heidel over here to um, do build our, our framing. Do our framing, and we can get them to build us something to put this counter on. Sure, they can just use two by fours, and we can put some rusted metal or something yeah. for some cabinet doors. and. They can do that for us too. Yeah, we can handle all this. But we can we can build it on up and then use the up, up above it for storage. Right. Stuff we don't need to get to very often. Yeah, I'm liking the sink. And then we can use the other one for somewhere on the outside. Yes, I agree. Now we gotta figure out where we want the window. Okay. So why I'd love for it to be above the window. I mean above the sink. But if you did that, what about you if you put air an air conditioner, conditioner in? But the window could come over to the side a little bit. Or it could go on this side. Yeah. So see, that window is pretty tall. It is tall. Well, I, mean, I know the wall is tall, too. Yeah. And there's an average height for a window, and I don't know what it is. But Brant knows. It's not that tall. <laughs> we'll get him to figure it out, but thank you for holding it. <laughs> I think it's going to work out perfect. Yeah, they do. But you know, that's our, probably our next decision that has to be made. The window position? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's going to have to frame for it. Once he gets the framing up, I think it'll be easier to see. Well, good. So next up for the barn will be the walls. Next up for the barn is seeing the kitchen sink. <laughs> oh, plus the plumber coming tomorrow. And yeah, that's right. And uh, telling us what all we need to do. Big steps, big, big steps. steps. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. More and more every day. I forgot how big this was and how big of an asset it's going to be. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw it over there at the barn, I said, that's not going to fit. You thought it was too big? I thought it was too big. But this wall is so big. So it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. It is perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey buddy, I guess you've heard about the house. And so what I'm thinking is, is you may want to start looking online and start looking at sofas, okay? Maybe a couple of lamps. I mean, I don't know what all you want in there, but just uh, something to think about. Maybe a lazy boy. How about that? How about a lazy boy? Hmm? Jojo, 
What's up, partner? So glad he's behaving, ain't you, buddy? I'm so glad he's behaving. Yeah. Well, I'll keep you updated on the house, okay? I will. In the meantime, you be a good boy and keep Joe straight. <laughs>